And what I learned was that I could still tell my story. I could still document my life. And I could still escape my hardships at that time, even with just a phone. This was the first photo that made me realize that phone photography was was a thing. I could do it. This was taken with an LG G3. I had kind of wandered and ended up at the coast. And as I was at the coast, I was viewing this this scene. There was all these these random weird weirdly shaped block cement, uh, these tetrapods coming out of the water and there was a single man, a little old man who had crawled out there with an old fishing pole and he was just fishing he was standing there in the middle of all these tetrapods uh, no chair no fancy tackle box, nothing he was just standing there and casting his line and just living his life, you know and I took this photo the way I wanted to see it. I was able to, to quickly edit it, you know, change it to black and white, drop the shadows a bit. And uh, the craziest thing happened is that I didn't have Instagram at the time, but I had Flickr, and I posted it to my Flickr. And for the first time ever, a photo that I had taken and posted was actually getting attention. This photo ended up getting favorited uh, around a thousand times. And it made it to the front page of Flickr, the Flickr Explore section. And it was kind of an, an eye-opening moment that it wasn't just my story or my experience or the photo I was trying to take. That I was actually able to go out and take a photo with a phone and it would be understood and appreciated and seen by thousands of people all, all over the world. I wasn't being limited by anything except my own creativity. Later, when I, uh, when I was started to get back on my feet, I was able to kind of hustle my way into getting this tiny little studio apartment um, I had gotten a different phone because the, the LG just broke one day the, the battery started to swell and it fried but I had to get something cheap because I didn't didn't have much in the way of finances so I got a, a Xiaomi Chinese phone it was a Xiaomi Mi 5S Plus I was able to get photos like this one this is another turning point, another chapter I was walking through a night market one night and I stumbled across a western themed barbershop called Slick and when I walked in it was basically empty there was one barber working in the back it was late at night and I was just trying to capture this barbershop you'd never know it from this one photo but this place was immaculate every every little detail they had thought of from the brickwork to the old-fashioned signs to the, the types of bottles they had on the walls, the, the barber's chair, the style of that, the photos up top, the, the type of, of trimmers they were using, everything. It was like a time machine, and it was just expertly thought out. And it was such an overwhelming, awesome experience to be in that, that barber shop in the middle of, of Taiwan, of all places. I was just trying to think, you know, I don't have a super wide angle, I don't want to do a whole video, I don't want to take a hundred different pictures of the same place from slightly different angles, so this was the best balance I could think of, you know, I, I dropped down to waist level, I tried to make sure all my lines were straight, hit my focus, take the photo, I posted it to Instagram, because at this point I now had Instagram, and craziest thing happened. I tagged the name of the shop. The guy who owns this barbershop saw my photo 
messaged me, got my phone number, called me. Next thing I know, the guy who owns this barbershop is telling me how he's actually in a big business. Um, the barbershop, he owns several of them, several locations, and they're just kind of a side project for him that he does for fun. His primary business is he works for a company that makes stuff for, like makes the lenses or whatever for uh, for iPhones and makes the different tooling they use in uh, an iPhone factory. So he was a very well-connected businessman who had several of these barbershops, and based on this one photo that he saw, not knowing what I took it with, he wanted me to come out and and photograph his barbershop officially. He wanted me to to see how they did their business, take some more photos, do some more you know things. And I started meeting all the barbers. I started meeting assistants. I started meeting his friends. I met the owner of the company that does all the stuff for Apple. I was suddenly going to very expensive dinners, meeting very important people, and getting well connected, and being appreciated for my artistic ability as a photographer, because of the cell phone. This was the next step. Back at my little studio apartment, I had a friend come over, a girl I knew, and she needed to take a shower. I decided to turn out all the lights in the apartment so the only light was coming from inside the shower. And there was, of course, the steam starting to fog the glass, and there was all the water droplets all over it. And I got the phone, again, cell phone, real close. And as I was about to take a photo of just these water droplets with the steam in the background, maybe you'd be able to make out the faint shape of a person. She just kind of did her thing with no direction at all. She was kind of wanting to send a message to me uh, in her way. And she simply took her fingers and started making this, this heart in the, in the steam. And that's what I took a photo of. That photo went on to, again, take me to that next level. This photo has now been downloaded and, and shared and viewed millions of times all over the world. It's been used in ad campaigns for everything from clean water to relaxing shower products to, I think, even some album covers. Um, and this photo has been in magazines. I mean, it has been a wildly popular and successful photo that once again kind of put my name out there and took me to that next level of self-confidence and recognition and it was all natural light all of my photos are natural light I never used flash or anything and it was taken with a cell phone there was another time I think I have a YouTube video about it where I basically just drove and drove and drove, and my idea was to kind of find where the road would take me. And as luck would have it, I ended up finding the dead end of this road. It actually stopped abruptly, and there was a, a gate. And old, old rusty gate. People hadn't been there for years. And it was locked. And I could see that on the other side of this gate, the road just kind of turned to, to nothing. It just kind of went into the sand. The sand was covering it. And then there were tetrapods. And again, it, it kind of went off into the ocean. I was able to get past the gate, go through, and, and I looked and I saw that as the tetrapods went out into the water, there was one single little post sticking up out of the end to kind of mark the end cap of this little, little bridge thing going out there. And there was... There was some mist from the ocean coming through, and the lighting, and just... At that moment, I couldn't help but to think of how I got to that place, and the fact that the road just kind of ended. And not only did the road end, but the, the land ended. It was suddenly just ocean. But even with the ocean, you could barely see it, because that kind of vanished into the mist and, and the steam. And I just kind of had this idea that it's like it's almost like you've you've arrived at the end of the earth, you know? It's because of the minimalism and the contrast involved 
that everyone sees it a little bit differently. Everybody kind of envisions something slightly different. But again, it was kind of a, for me personally, was a, was made, making me realize that suddenly I didn't have to do what I did before where I was trying to show all the old buildings and all the details of the signs and all the little fabric of the monk's clothing. I didn't have to be in the barber shop where I was showing all of the, the complicated bottles and colors and, and tones. I didn't need to have the the proper mood set with with the lighting and the color temperature suddenly I could I could strip away everything I could actually minimize what was actually in the photo or what we were actually seeing and play more off of our own minds and our own our own imagination to kind of tell a different story so later this is a video I do know that I have on YouTube as a video called Tai Chung Mountains, I decided one day to just drive up in the mountains and kind of see where I ended up. And there was a moment when we were up high in the mountains, above the, the cloud coverage, and there was a point where two peaks came down, two ridges came down, and turned into a valley. And right at the bottom, very bottom middle of the valley is where I stopped my car. And I got out, and uh, my wife and my son were with me. And it was there was a little bit of rain, some light rain coming down. There was there was clouds, so it was very foggy. You couldn't really see anything. Um, it was cold. I just again kind of took the idea from the ocean photo and took it to the next level. I just let my, my wife and my son go out there hand in hand and come, kind of go explore the valley. And as they walked out to kind of see what they could make out, I decided that these two completely opposing elements, this light, white, bright, soft, angelic cloud coverage, completely contrasted with dark, hard, wet, cold mountain sides, and then adding that human element back to it, and not just anybody, but my wife and child. It was a, it was a story I wanted to remember, and I wanted to remember the way I saw it. So, composed my shot, took the photo, and came with this, and again, it was I made it black and white. I didn't want any distractions from little hints of color. I didn't want to worry about the color temperature. I didn't want to have to worry about any technical aspects. This is a minimalist photo. Really no detail. No fine elements. No color no high resolution it's just this beautiful angelic white cloud coverage coming down on the the dark mountain sides and in the middle of it all to my family again this was a very good photo for me it was a learning moment for me this photo taught me that I was able to even get the attention of like big boys. I was on my way from Sweden to Norway and during this flight, because it's a small plane just going from Sweden to Norway, you know, they're neighbors, small plane, short flight, but this businessman here was the only other person on the plane with me and he happened to be sitting next to me uh, on the other side of the aisle. I had my window seat, he had his. And the the whole environment was like you see it here. It was it was dark inside the plane. They didn't have the lights on. You had this bright light coming from outside. And I saw this this man he was wearing this nice suit, 
but he wasn't so buttoned up tight. He had his, he had his collar undone. He looked very professional, but his hair was a little bit long, and he had some facial hair. He was also a younger guy. And as I watched him, I saw the way that he was kind of contemplating to himself, and he would speak a little bit. He, he'd pull out his laptop and do something, and he'd put it away. And he, he was kind of second-guessing himself. It looked like he was rehearsing something in his head. And I suddenly started to make up an entire story, a whole storyline in my mind of who this guy was and where he was going and what it was that he was doing and why he was dressed this way. Again, I just wanted to remember this moment. I liked the scene. So at this point, I had an iPhone 7 Plus, and, you know, I, I lifted it from my waist. You know, I pointed it over at him without me actually looking at him. I just kind of pointed it in that direction and hit the shutter to take the photo. Then I looked at it. You know, I straightened it out, cropped it a little bit, dropped the shadows, and I posted the photo. And if you actually go through the comments here, you see the official Apple account it says, Hello there. We'd love to find out more about you and your amazing work. Do you have any interest in possibly being featured on our Apple account? Let's talk blah, 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 blah. This is when Apple uh, was first, this is a couple years ago, they were first starting their shot on iPhone campaign. And one of the themes they were doing at one point was travel, airplanes. And they saw this photo, and they saw that it was taken with an iPhone, and they decided that they wanted to talk to me. They wanted to feature my photo. And suddenly, here I am, just a normal guy, using my cell phone for photography. And I've got big boys, like Apple, calling me out, pointing at me, asking me if I'm interested in working with them. Again, another proud moment, another learning moment for me. And finally, when I decided that I had learned a lot from limiting myself to a cell phone. At this point, life had got back on track. I was back to making money and, and back with my family and, and back to, to things going in the right direction. I had still continued to only use a cell phone because I had such a great appreciation for what it was teaching me about what's really important, the real priorities with photography. I knew I wanted to finally move on and try something else, but I was honestly a little hesitant about getting directly back into going out and buying the, the latest and greatest digital camera. I was so worried that that shock of suddenly having such a nice, big, expensive digital camera that can do everything and more with all these limitless options, I was worried that I was going to forget these very fundamental, important lessons that I had learned, and that almost like it would have been wasted. I wanted to try something different, but I needed to challenge myself. I needed to stay within a certain realm. I just wanted it to be a different realm. And that's when I decided to try film. When I had gone back to America a few years ago, I had found this old Yashica FX-103 program in a flea market. It had a Mamiya Secor 55mm f1.4 attached to it with a lens adapter. This is an M42 lens but a CY mount. They didn't know if it worked. It was up on the top shelf collecting dust. I didn't know if it worked looked rough, but appeared to be in one piece. I said, how much do you want for it? And they said, uh, well, 15 bucks. I thought, oh, for 15 bucks, it'd be a good ornament, if nothing else. So, yeah, okay, 15 bucks. Bought the camera for $15, camera and lens. And to my delight and surprise, it worked perfectly. Put a new battery in it, cleaned some things up, flawless. Even the built-in meter is 
perfect. Spot on. So, I had had this sitting in my bag. Well, sitting on a shelf, going from a bag to a shelf, never being used, really, since I had left America. But I decided, you know what, that's my new challenge. I'm going to completely give up the digital aspect of photography. No more apps, no more filters, no more infinite cropping, no more being able to chimp and see my results and make minor adjustments, infinite photos, instant uploads. Now I'll give myself the benefit of interchangeable lenses and full frame quality, but I'll have to wait. I'll be limited in my number of shots, I'll have to be patient to see my results, and I'll be limited in what I can do in all the ways that film is limited. And to mark that transition for me, to mark the torch being handed over from cell phone photography to film photography, I took my cell phone and I put it right up to the viewfinder of this camera right here, and I pointed it at my son as he was playing with his toys and I took the picture through the viewfinder with my cell phone and I just named it SLR Nostalgia and I guess this will be my next video it's talking about what I learned from film photography anyway hopefully that didn't bore you too much thank you for watching Till next time